Okay, so we'll pick back up with the structure of the eye. Um, as I mentioned in the notes yesterday, uh, we do have layers that form the wall of the eyeball. We have three layers, the outside layer, the middle layer, and the inside layer, each of them serving different functions. As you can see on here, uh oh, get this for y'all. We have the outside layer, the fibrous layer, the middle layer, which is going to be the vascular layer, and the inner layer, which is going to be your neural layer, the retina. And then once again, here we have the different structures of the eye. Uh, we'll be talking about um, all of the areas. We have the um, anterior segment filled with aqueous humor, uh, which is going to be a thinner uh, fluid. You have the posterior segment that's filled with a jelly-like fluid. Um, here we see our lens. Of course, the hole right here is going to be the pupil. We have our ciliary zonal and the ciliary body, which are going to help control the shape of the lens. And uh, we have our iris, which of course is the color of your eye. Uh, the cornea is going to be this out here in the front. And then back here, you can see that the optic nerve is um, extremely large, especially in comparison to other nerves in the body, um, because you do have so many sensors, um, receptors in your eyes. Okay, so the outer layer, or the uh, fibrous layer, is made up of the sclera. This is the wide of your eye. Um, it is just white connective tissue. It's relatively thick, serves as uh, some protection. And it continues to the front of your eye. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to see if it continued to be white. Um, it becomes the cornea, which is transparent, um, allows light for uh, to pass through. Now, it does repair itself very easily, which is why if you get some type of LASIK eye surgery, uh, you don't have to have any kind of sutures because the cornea will basically come straight back down and form a suction back to the eye and it will repair uh, very easily and it is actually the only human tissue that you can transplant without fear of rejection the middle layers the um, vascular layer it's made up of what we call the choroid um, it is full of blood which is why it's called the vascular layer um, it also has uh, pigment uh, kind of like the pigment that's found in your skin melanin and that keeps light from being able to scatter as it enters into your eye. Um, it is uh, towards the front, the anterior portion of the eye, it becomes um, two modified structures. The ciliary body, which is going to be the smooth muscles that actually attach to the lens. And then, of course, the iris, which regulates the amount of light that enters into the eye. So the pupil itself, right down here, is not an actual structure. It is just a space that is surrounded by the iris. Uh, the iris is pigmented and that's how you get your eye color. Um, most babies are actually born with uh, a bluish or grayish kind of eye color and then over time within the first year you'll notice their eye colors will be changing because they have not produced that pigment that's going to change their eye color yet. There's going to be a wide variety of eye colors um, that you can see green eyes, dark brown, light brown, hazel, grayish, deep blue, a brighter blue, and all of that's going to be depending on the type of melanin that's produced and the amount of melanin that's actually produced. The retina, which is going to be your neural layer or your sensory layer, uh, has two layers within itself. It has an outer pigmented layer and the inner neural layer. And that neural layer is going to contain your receptor cells. Now these are photoreceptors. Remember, photo means light. So they are detecting light. And you have two types. You have rods and cones. And they're going to be responsible for detecting different kinds of um, light. Uh, once those uh, receptors actually detect the light, they will... Um, transmit an impulse along bipolar neurons that you'll remember from the nervous system that we really only find in the special senses um, and they are pretty rare in the body um, and um, so it'll go from a bipolar neuron to a ganglion cell 
and then it'll leave the retina towards the brain through the optic nerve. So they will all collect together and then um, um, travel to your brain. The optic disc is your blind spot. It is actually where the optic nerve leaves the eyeball. And I'll show you on one of the pictures, you can actually see that the um, optic nerve is so thick that that little area right there um, does not actually have a retinal layer in front of it. So if something, if an image is being focused in on that spot, depending on its position, then you actually will not see it. And these are your, um, looking at that uh, layer of the retina. Uh, right here we have the pigmented layer, this outer part. And then this is going to be the layer that actually contains um, your receptor cells. So the reason why they're called rods and cones, you can clearly see this one right here is going to be a rod because of this shape. And this one's going to be a cone, as you can see right here. So your rods and your cones. And then um, once they are stimulated, the impulse will travel through one of these bipolar cells to a ganglion cell to um, the nerve that will um, go into the optic nerve and be processed in your brain. So as you can see right here, this is going to be the neural layer of your retina and you'll have the processes, they'll all join in together right here and so this is actually, this whole structure is your optic nerve. Now this area right here where they actually form and become the optic nerve is going to be the optic disc. So remember that's the blind spot. So if you're looking at something and the image is going to be focused right in on that area, you're not going to be able to detect it. So your rods versus your cones. Um, the rods are going to be uh, mostly found towards the edges of your retina. It allows for dim light vision and peripheral vision. If you ever look really closely, you'll notice that your peripheral vision along the side, you will not notice as distinct of colors. You're actually viewing things just in gray tones in uh, your peripheral vision. Once you've seen something, then your mind will kind of recognize what the color is and color it in for you. But if you haven't seen it yet, then you're definitely going to be seeing it in gray tones. The cones, I always remember cones for color. Um, these are what allow for detailed color vision. They are going to be densest in the center of the retina. There's an area called the fovea centralis. It is an area of the retina that only contains cones, um, which is why we have a lot better perception of things that were focused on directly in front of us. Um, like I said before, we don't have any photoreceptor cells at the optic disc. Um, which is your blind spot. Uh, for your cones, uh, you really have three types of cones. They're going to detect three main colors of light um, because they are sensitive to those different wavelengths. Some people who are colorblind, um, there's obviously different kinds of color blindness depending on which type of cone you are missing. And that's just showing the peak um, wavelengths that are detected by the three types of cones. So these are going to be your red cones, your green cones, and your blue cones. Your lens is a biconvex crystal-like structure. So biconvex means it protrudes outwards on both sides and it is held in place by this um, suspensory ligament that's attached to the ciliary bodies. Right there. Um, if you get a cataract, um, basically what happens is your lens becomes hard and opaque with age. And these pictures right here are just showing, you can see the lens right there. It's almost kind of like an M&M. It can be a rather tough structure, um, but it, when you get cataracts as you age, of course your vision will become hazy and distorted, and eventually you can become blind in the eye. And that is actually showing a lens that has a cataracts. Those two segments I talked about earlier, the anterior segment and the posterior segment, 
Uh, the anterior segment does contain um, aqueous humor, which is going to be um, very liquidy, and the posterior segment contains your vitreous humor, which is going to be a lot thicker and more jelly-like. And these will be our last two slides and we'll be done. Um, so the anterior segment, which has the aqueous humor, it's very watery. Um, it's similar to blood plasma and what it's made up of, and it helps to provide nutrients for the lens and cornea, and it also help, helps maintain intraocular pressure, so the pressure in your eye is correct. Now it is reabsorbed into, um, into your blood um, through a little sinus, which is a canal, and... Um, so you're constantly replacing your aqueous humor. If for some reason that sinus gets blocked, um, that can lead to a lot of pressure inside your eye, a lot of pain. You may have heard of glaucoma before. That's basically whenever you cannot drain um, the aqueous humor from the anterior segment. And then the vitreous humor is gel-like. It helps to keep your eye from collapsing and helps to maintain intraocular pressure. Now your vitreous humor is not continuously replaced, so whatever pretty much you were born with, um, once you have it, it's, you're, it's not continuously being replenished like the aqueous humor. It's just going to be there. And we will stop there.